Tanks, mobile rocket artillery, and advanced short-range ballistic missiles are just some of the equipment being stationed in western Russia. New satellite images released by Maxar Technologies on Thursday showing a buildup about 100 miles away from the Ukrainian border. Now, these pictures coming just hours after Moscow and Washington exchanged warnings about the effects that any escalation would mean for the ongoing standoff. Speaking at an annual news conference on Thursday, Russian President Vladimir Putin making it very clear what actions he says would be crossing a red line. There must be no further expansion of NATO eastward. The ball is in their court. They should reply with something to us. In this regard, I would like to note that in general we see a positive reaction from the U.S. Partners tell us that they're ready to start this discussion of these negotiations in the very beginning of next year in Geneva. Now, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki essentially responding to those remarks, saying no meeting has been confirmed at this time, but did verify the increased movements of Kremlin personnel to western Russia, including over 100,000 troops. We do know that the two sides are working towards a meeting sometime next month, but certain preconditions, such as the ones just laid out by Russian President Putin, may stand in the way of any meaningful progress. I can't speak to what President Putin's motivation is at any point in time, certainly not today. Uh, we are working towards diplomatic talks. Uh, there have been proposals put forward by the Russians, some we would agree with, some we certainly wouldn't agree with. Obviously, uh, on the NATO uh, example is a good example of that. And the U.S. is standing firm in its position that any invasion of Ukraine would trigger dire consequences for Russia. In addition to sanctions, administration officials say that an escalation would be met with the very type of action that Putin is trying to prevent, which is an increased NATO presence in Eastern Europe to deter Moscow's aggressions. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Alex. Well, joining us now, former Trump campaign foreign policy advisor and Newsmax contributor George Papadopoulos. George, uh, thank you so much. Obviously, you know, these satellite images are alarming to see, particularly when you put them in the context of the trend line here from the last time Joe Biden was at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. He and President Obama at the time basically allowing Russia to march into Crimea, claim it for themselves. It appears Russia poised do the same thing here in Ukraine. Well, thanks a lot for having me, Joe, and uh, Merry Christmas. Look, uh, the weak and the feckless leadership of the Biden administration has not only invited a security and a humanitarian crisis along America's southern border, but now our friends in Ukraine are feeling the heat and have a destabilized eastern border because of these policies that the Biden administration has once again adopted towards the Ukraine-Russia relationship. Vladimir Putin has been very consistent, actually, towards his policy with Ukraine. Uh, since Joe Biden was in a leadership position, it was exactly as you just mentioned, in 2014, when the Russians seized Crimea and eventually initiated the war in the East, which has continued until today. The only difference with these new activities by the Russian military and the administration there is that the Russians are doing this while the Biden administration is openly threatening sanctions, and they are also now proposing to the Biden administration and NATO as a whole conditions that if they do not meet, they will likely invade Ukraine. So the Biden administration is really now facing a two-front threat, not only domestically, but likely in a conflict with Russia over Ukraine. Well, you know, I, I find it ironic. I'd be remiss if I didn't say something. Two years ago, this time, uh, you couldn't stop the word Ukraine from coming out of the mouths of members of the of Congress Democrats. They couldn't stop talking about Ukraine this and Ukraine that during the impeachment of President Trump, the first one. Uh, now, tis the night before Christmas and all through the House, uh, there is not a stirring, not an uttering of Ukraine. It appears uh, Democrats want to place their head in the sand and hope that this goes away. And if they're not paying attention, uh, Vladimir Putin has no plans on backing down. Vladimir Putin is likely not going to back down because the sanction proposals in which the Biden administration are proposing are effectively um, toothless. The, the, the 180 turn here between the Trump administration and the Biden administration is exactly why Putin now feels emboldened. The Trump administration did two key aspects to their policy approach towards Russia and this long-simmering conflict between Russia and Ukraine. 
They, the first thing was they provided the Ukrainians with defensive weapons, javelin missiles, in order to deter an increasingly aggressive Russian posture in the east. And secondly, they continued to sanction the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is a pipeline which essentially now is designed to circumvent Ukraine and ossify the, U, the Russian-German energy relationship and, by extension, monopolize Russia's hold on the entire European energy market. These two policy approaches have now been abandoned by the Biden administration. The Biden administration is not uh, guaranteeing security and defensive weapons to the Ukrainian state, and they waived sanctions in order to allow the completion of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline this past September. So this is exactly what happens when you appease a bully like Vladimir Putin, and it's not surprising that he is now asking for further conditions or else he will invade. Well, to that point, you look at what's happening here. You have the Secretary General of NATO uh, saying that Russia is a declining economic po uh, economic power. Uh, you have the Biden White House ignoring them. It, I don't think they seem to realize they don't have to be an economic powerhouse to be a military nightmare on the global stage. Uh, you look at what's happened already. Uh, they've hacked our, our fuel supply. They've hacked our beef supply. Uh, they're getting ready to ingrade, uh, in, invade Ukraine. Uh, this soft power nation has become Coming a 21st century hard power nightmare, and we have to do something because otherwise uh, it's going to get much darker before dawn. President Trump said it best. He said on uh, numerous policies of the Biden administration, including President Biden himself, simply went back to the golf course and allowed many of the Trump administration policies, not only on the border, but in foreign policy, to remain intact. The Biden administration would likely see very high approval ratings and a gloating media. Unfortunately for the Biden administration, they've decided to abandon many of the policies that the Trump administration adopted, which were actively working to not only secure the home front, but to uh, continue to uh, present international peace and stability around the world. And while, of course, China is our preeminent political security and economic threat in the 21st century, we cannot forget that Russia is and will remain a key competitor increasingly in Eastern Europe and in the Middle East. And now that we see China and Russia essentially teaming up, including with war drills and a likely two-front war scenario in which the United States might have to respond to simultaneous conflicts, not only in Ukraine, but now in Taiwan, you really do understand how far the United States has fallen on the global stage since the Trump administration has actually left office. And this is something that worries not only our friends, but our foes alike are watching very closely, and they are responding in front of the world to see. Absolutely. Again, America usually always uh, basically being able to be on a two-war, uh, a, a basically a, a two-war doctrine. Uh, now it seems, again, you have Russia and China working together uh, to basically destabilize the Middle East, use Afghanistan as an outpost for themselves, and basically secure the region as an outpost to threaten the Western world. Uh, George, uh, thank you for helping us see through the darkness here. Merry Christmas, and hope to talk to you in the new year, my friend. Thank you, Joe. Merry Christmas. Have a great one. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.